Hey guys, it's Cody here again. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at using UGCS software for planning your mission for an aerial LiDAR scan. Today we're gonna to be doing our setup using the M300 and the LiAir V70, uh, but this information also applies to platforms such as the M600, the M210 V2, and LiDAR systems like the LiAir V40 and the S220. UGCS uses a feature called terrain following. Sometimes this can interfere with your mission because the DJI software uses your elevation from your known takeoff point. So if your LiDAR mission goes to an elevation that's above your normal limit, it can cause the mission to fail or pause. To avoid this, we're gonna go ahead and increase our maximum elevation inside the DJI software. To do that, go to manual flight, tap on the three dots to access your menu, Scroll down to maximum altitude, and we're gonna set it to 200 meters instead of the default 120. Keep in mind that this maximum altitude is just a simple override for our UGCS mission so that there's no incompatibility. You wanna remember this going forward for your future flights so that you're not actually going above that 400 foot above ground limit. Now that we've changed the appropriate settings for elevation in the DJI app, we're gonna go into the UGCS software and we're gonna configure our vehicle profile. So go to your main menu, click on profiles. Today we're gonna add the DJI M300 RTK. Click on that and then edit. First thing we're gonna wanna change is our fence radius. We're gonna put this to 5,000 meters instead of 500. This will remove the possibility for any errors that you would encounter when flying your mission uh, due to being too close to the fence radius. Now that we've changed the appropriate settings in the DJI app, let's go ahead and import a KML for our project. We're gonna do that by clicking on the little globe icon, which is labeled map options up here in the top right. Go to map layers. And once you're in there, go to the 2D objects tab. You're gonna add a new source, give it whatever name is appropriate, we're gonna call ours location. Click on it, go to upload. And this is where you'll find your KMZ file wherever you've stored it on your computer. We're gonna go ahead and click on ours and hit select. And then we're gonna hit the arrow to move it to the right, which is the enabled field. Now you can see our border coming up here for our mission. Now that we've imported our KML and we can see our mission area, let's go ahead and create a new route. We're gonna go up to the top left here and hit add new route. Name it whatever you want. We're gonna call ours test for now. Go ahead and click next. And you're gonna search for the vehicle that you wanna use for your route. We're gonna be using the DJI M300 for ours. So select that and hit next. For the initial settings here, um, something that you may wanna look at is the action on loss of RC. By default, it'll be set on home. If you're flying a craft like the M600, you may want to change that to continue because of the limited range. Anytime you have a signal interruption, if you have it on home, it's going to immediately stop your mission and have that craft return to its home point. If you have it set to continue, it'll just resume along its mission path and hopefully when it comes back to you, you'll be able to regain that control link. Go ahead and hit OK. And we're going to switch to an area scan. Something important to note for doing LiDAR is the turn types. We don't want stop and turn because your IMU doesn't like that kind of movement. Uh, it makes it hard to interpret the data. Something that makes it a little bit easier is switching it to adaptive bank and turning. That'll give that IMU that nice forward motion that it likes to have. So we'll use the area scan tool to draw the perimeter of our mission area. You'll want to make sure that you set your waypoints outside of the area you want to scan to make sure you get full coverage. Go ahead and hold shift and click with the left mouse button to add your waypoints, making sure they're outside of the KML border. And when you're finished, just right click to set the area. Next thing to look at is our flight height. We're going to put that to 100 meters. And from there, we're going to look at our side distance. In order to calculate that value, you want to multiply your flight height by a factor of 0.7. So 100 times 0.7 is 70 meters. Now, as you can see, 
Because our mission area is so small, we only need two flight lines in order to cover the whole area for our scan. So let's make our mission area a little bit bigger and see what that would look like. We'll go ahead and let the software reprocess. And once it has, you can see it's added more flight lines to accommodate for our larger mission area. Important thing to note is the direction of your flight lines. That can be changed using this little rotating arrow here. You're gonna to wanna to have it moving along the longest line of your mission area. That maximizes your efficiency for your flight times and eliminates the amount of turning that aircraft has to do in the air. A really helpful tool that you can refer to to make sure everything is gonna be within your limits is the elevation tool. So go ahead and click up on the little gear icon here on your create new route area. Go to show elevation and you'll get a nice little pop-up window here at the bottom. This will give you information like your mission duration estimate. You wanna make sure that's within the limitations of your craft. Obviously, you're not gonna to wanna to fly a larger mission that's gonna take you an hour and a half. As you can see, using the UGCS software is really simple and easy to learn. For our next videos, we're gonna focus on things like uploading your mission to your drone and using the split route feature to break down your missions into more manageable sizes. Thanks for watching with us. See you on the next one.